Greetings, Zero here. Welcome back to the Seal Mod type run of EV Emerald. Last time, we made it through Victory Road. In spite of some more map breaking glitches. But, none of that matters now. It's time to take on the Elite Four. I did level up Hellion a little more to be on par with the rest of the team, but otherwise, this is it. We're gonna have to beat them all in sequence. No saving between. Anyways. Let's go. This is the point of no return. We either make it all the way through, or we lose. Now, Sydney starts off with dark types. Specifically, he starts about with a mighty Anna. So, strategically, I decide to go with Registeel. For two reasons. One, Clear Body nullifies Intimidate, and two, it knows a Fighting-type attack. I'm gonna knock this thing out right away before it can use Roar. Well, I was trying to, I guess. Well, he's gonna heal. And Roar has negative priority, so... This means that if I get... Even if I do slow down from using Curse, I'm still going to attack first if he chooses Roar. And this should knock him out. Nope, it's not. Down you go. Gain a little of my health back thanks to the Shell Bell. Okay, let's use it again. Okay, Swords Dance. That is a little worrying. But I don't think there's any moves it can use that are particularly dangerous. I don't know if it knows Guillotine, but I'm a higher level at it, so it wouldn't hit anyway if it could. Oh, Surf. Special Attack. Eh. Well, that's a bit of a waste. In fact, that's kind of the thing that's underwhelming about Crawdon, is it doesn't learn a lot of physical attacks. Which sucks, because it's one selling point over Sharpedo, is it gets Swords Dance. There's Shift Tree. Mm-hmm. Oh, that can get annoying. If it comes down to it, I could just swap out and send in... Well, never mind, I was about to say I could send in Skarmori and use Swift, but... That's besides the point now. Level up! go. And now you should finish off with Absol. The only thing that's kind of annoying about Absol is it has... Is it pressure? If it has pressure, then that means I'm going to burn more power points against it. That's also the issue that I'm going to have with Dusclops in the next battle. Maybe it's two of them. But, battle's over. Sydney's usually pretty easy, so that doesn't surprise me. Back when I played Generation 3 for the first time, it was always Phoebe that gave me trouble. Okay, so... Alright. We're just gonna heal up real quick, and I'll cut ahead. Of course, it turns out I didn't need to restore any of my hit points. I got them all back thanks to the Shell Bell, but using Celepa Berries to get power points back certainly helps. So now we fight the ghost type trainer, Phoebe. 
Her grandparents are the Shrine Keepers on Mount Pyre. This time we're starting off with Metagross. Now, of course, Metagross is a psychic type, but it's also very tanky. I'm not too worried. The main reason I'm sitting it out first is because it has Shadow Ball. Now, the first Dust Clops that Phoebe uses is a support Pokemon. This one has a bunch of status inflicting moves. Okay, fuck that if you're gonna waste a turn. As I was saying, it likes to inflict things like Will O Wisp, um, Curse as well. And this is the other Dust Clops, which is a special attacker. For some reason. I, I don't get it either. That just doesn't make any sense. You don't want to use special attacks on Dusclops. Out of all. Yeah, I think this is just going to be a case of spam. Use Meteor Mash. Down you go. Now the only downside is, of course, because Dust Clops, both of them have pressure, that means I used a lot of power points to take them out. Eh, I'll just use Lepa Berry, I'll be fine. That was exactly two minutes flat. Not bad. Okay, so give me a second to restore those power points. Okay, now this time we're actually going to run Magnemite first. Most of our Pokemon are going to be of uh, Glacius Pokemon are going to be water types. Her team is ice type, of course, but. Well, the thing is, there weren't that many non-water ice types in the first three generations. In fact, I think even now the majority of ice types are still dual water ice type. I could be mistaken. Hmm. Could have sworn I healed you. Oh, guess not. Oh well, it's not gonna matter. Alright, here's Wall Rain. And almost one shot. Not quite. That could hurt. That did hurt. Oh, come on! That was a speed tie? Fuck you, Walrain. Fine! Say hello, say hello to his big brother! Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Almost. Now, several of her Pokemon know. I actually know. I think it's just a couple of them know Sheer Cold, which is one hit knockout move. But because I'm a higher level, they'll never hit. And even then, at least one of my Pokemon has Sturdy. That being the Magnemite that was knocked out. I think Magneton might have it too. I don't think it has a Magnet Pole. In fact, you know what? I'm just gonna check that real quick. Why not? Yeah, it also has Sturdy. Again, this is Gen 3 Sturdy, so... Doesn't really matter. Good 
Dr. Celio. Oh, now you use hail. Took you long enough. The main danger with hail isn't the damage over time, although that is annoying. It's the guaranteed hits with Blizzard. Oh, fuck you. You would survive on one fucking hit point, wouldn't you? Cheeky bastard. Quit wasting my time. Battle's gonna end pretty much only one way. Doesn't matter if it's gonna be this turn or the next one, you will lose. Okay, we take those. I guess we'll just flex on you. Three down, two to go. Yeah, I'm not surprised either. And we're gonna heal real quick. Now here's the tricky thing. I'm not entirely sure what I'm gonna do about this, because originally I was thinking I'll just use Dragon Claw on Aggron, but then I remembered. All Dragon-type attacks are special prior to Generation 4. Because reasons! But, hmm, we'll see. Especially because, well, Drake Salamence is gonna be a big pain in the ass. Also, I forget, is it this time? Does he have? I forget if he has a Kingdra in Emerald or not. I know that his team in Ruby and Sapphire is Shellgon, Two Flygon, Altaria, and Salamence. Fuck off. Alright, one down, but that's the easy one down. Shelgon likes to slow you down with Rock Tomb. That's basically all it does. Oh, you do have Kingdra. Okay. Okay, stop wasting my time. Fine! Fine! Be that way! I was hoping to get the attack boost. Guess not. Come on, give me the special defense drop. Okay, you know what? Just fuck off. There's Flygon. Yeah, can you tell this is the one I was worried about? Down you go. Level up. And there's Salamence. Okay, well... I'm only gonna get one hit in, or not. Not even that. Okay, fine, be that way. Okay, I need to slow you down. No, that was... That works. Oh, fuck off. No, we are not ending it this way. Not happening. I could spam too. You served your purpose. Problem is, Altaria knows Earthquake. So, uh, yeah. Fuck you, I have money. 
Wait, I thought I had Earthquake. Uh, okay. Yeah, that was rough. Yeah, if, if I was saying I can't use items, that would have been a loss. I fully admit that. Because unfortunately, I just don't have anything to really knock out dragon types quickly. The closest I have would be to run Ice Beam on... or Dragon Claw on... Well, Agron, that's what I did. But that wasn't enough, because Agron is a shitty special attacker. You know, I should just use regular revives. Alright, let's just do a quick inventory of power points. You're cool. You're cool. Okay. This is it. Okay, so I'm gonna skip ahead, because this is... I think I cut that prematurely. I was about to say it was a long walk, so... This is it. Time to fight Wallace. In some ways, Wallace is harder than Steven was in Ruby and Sapphire. Mostly because, if I can be frank, Raindance teams are broken in Gen 3. They were... Back when the so-called Weather War meta was a thing, Rain teams reign supreme. No pun intended. You're gonna use Raindance for sure. Okay, just zap it. Don't want to take any chances. Oh, okay. You're not going to use it. Normally you start off with Rain Dance. I guess not this time. The main one to be worried about with Wallace. Well. Okay, so Ludicolo, which has Swiss Swim, so it moves really, really fast in the rain. And Kingdra... Well, oh, yeah, also Wishcast, because Earthquake. In fact, you know what? We're going to do something a little cheeky. Yes, I'm going to lose speed, but I'm also going to gain defense. So Earthquake's not going to hit me as hard. And every time I do this, it's going to deal less and less damage, whereas I'm going to hit harder and harder whenever I do attack. Yeah, you can set up if you like, but the only special attack I have won't work on you anyway. I don't intend to use it. Alright, well... Let's make this fast. All right, I think we're good. Let's just top it off real quick, because a crit could potentially just knock me out if he feels like being a smart ass. Now it's time to smash. Down goes Wishcash. No surprises there. How much health do I get back? I hit pretty hard, and Shell Bill gives you a percentage of health to, of damage dealt back. That wasn't much. And you can't lower my attack power, Gyarados. We're gonna use Thunderbolt. Yes, I boosted attack power, but well. Water and Flying type. That was the main way that Gyarados was balanced back in Generation 1, because Gyarados was absolutely... Well, it was one of the strongest Pokémon in Generation 1. It was only pretty much balanced by its extreme vulnerability to Electric-type attacks. Level up! Now, is it cheap to just solo walls with Electric-types? Okay, kinda. 
but... Well... Wallace... Normally he's a bit smarter than this. I don't know why he hasn't tried to use Rain Dance. Normally he should by now, but he hasn't? Okay. Oh, you're gonna do this. Okay. But I only need to hit you once. And then Walsh's last Pokemon is either gonna be Milotic or Kingdra. Can't of course, Walsh's Ace and Ruby and Sapphire when he's a gym leader is Milotic, but. Yeah, it's Milotic. Fittingly, since it's. The rarest non legendary, non unique Pokemon in Generation 3. Because of how, one, ridiculously difficult it is to get B Bass, and then the frankly absurd evolution requirement. And that's a wrap! It's over. We went from. A battle that I should have lost to a complete curb stop. Yeah, Skarmory didn't really get to do anything, unfortunately. And, let's be honest, most of what Aggron did was... ...just get destroyed, let's be honest. Be back in town, Now we get to see a roll call of the band. On drums we have Protomech the Registeel. On keyboard we have Aces High the Skarmory. On bass we have Hellion the Magnemite. On lead vocals we have Black Sabbath the Metagross. On secondary guitar, we have Electric Eye the Magneton, and on lead guitar, we have Alice the Agron. Give it up for the Steel Monotype team, ladies and gentlemen. And yours truly as the band manager. And roll credits. So, the credits, of course, are going to show the various Pokemon you've got registered in the Pokedex. I haven't caught that many Pokemon, so you're going to see a lot of duplicates. Now, normally at the very end, it's going to show your starter. I don't know if that's still the case in this one, because, well, this has Eevee as your starter. That's a possible starter. I know, it was kind of pointless for me to pick Eevee Emerald and then not use Eevee, now, now I think about it. Maybe I should have done an electric monotype. Then I could say at least I used Eevee. Eh. Oh well. Yeah, I think if you hold down B, it actually goes faster, but I think I'll just listen to the music.
You see all these Japanese names, and you see Seth McMahill and Teresa Lily Green. Just a couple of non-Japanese names. Oh, so Eevee does show up last. I do find it interesting that they use Braille in a game, you know, a video game, which by definition you can't really play. Oh, Satoru Iwata. Rest in peace. And if you believe this screen, it should be the end. But, to paraphrase Winston Churchill, this isn't the end. Not even the beginning of the end. But it might be the end of the beginning. I'll see you next time.